All right. Good afternoon, everybody. Good to uh, see you, I think, uh, in terms of I'm looking at little tiny screens. Um, trust you're all well. Uh, Kevin and I are here to talk about free agency. And uh, then on Thursday, I'm going to be with Chris Pettit, and we'll talk about the upcoming college draft. And uh, let's go. Dan Duggan, The Athletic. Hey, guys. I have a question for each of you, if that's OK. Um, start with you, Dave. You've always kind of avoided guys with injury histories, it seems like, in free agency. You've spoken about that. Uh, so what's what's different this year with guys like Kenny and Adoree who have, you know, some injury histories in their past and you felt comfortable paying them uh, big money? Well, I'll tell you what, Dan. We, you know, we really, you know, we had them come in. It was a little different with the free agency this year. We actually had them come in first. All right, so we really, you know, all three guys, you know, Kenny and, and Adoree and, and, and Kyle, we had them in here and uh, we – we spent, it was, it was an old school free agency. We got to talk, chance to visit with them. They went out to dinner with, with various people in the organization. They were here a couple of nights. We had, a, our doctors were able to put their hands on them. I mean, it was an old fashioned free agency, <clears throat> excuse me, and Ronnie and, and, the, and Doc Rodeo felt very comfortable with us moving forward with the signing of those three guys, Dan. Okay? Gotcha, and then uh, Kevin, this is sort of a two part question. Just. What are your expectations for the cap next year, and, and how much did you know an expected increase play into how aggressive you guys were this year? Well, we don't know what next year is going to look like yet, um, so we're we're making some conservative assumptions. Um, we were aggressive this year. We had to do uh, probably a few cap practices that we normally typically type to try to avoid, um, but with a lower cap number and some plans to be aggressive we had to do some of those things and we know that next year's number could be a low one again and we're prepared for for whatever the outcome is thanks guys Paul Schwartz New York Post hey Kevin how you doing good Paul how are you good very good uh Kevin this is for you um at the start of this I mean you know the the budget and the numbers better than anybody going into this whole process you know probably to the penny I would guess or certainly to the pennies and um uh, if I would have took you back uh, two or three weeks before free agency and said, you know, I'm pretty confident you guys are going to get the top receiver, Kenny Galladay, for big money and, um, you know, perhaps the top cornerback for big money, would you have been a surprised, um, not surprised, or like, I'm not so sure we'd be able to do that with the cap? Uh, there were no surprises. I mean, I, it's always a bit of a unknown who the players are that you will – not target, but who you'll be able to attract. But we knew we were going to be aggressive. And as far as just the the actual, you know, aggressive, uh, you can't be aggressive unless there's money to, to do that, obviously. So there's this whole, you know, the Giants went into this with however many millions in the cap, and you knew you could manipulate it some way, shape, or form. Um, uh, did you know that you could make, you know, give, um, you know, $100 million in, in, in salaries or guarantees to, you know, just a couple of players. Did you know that beforehand that was possible? We did, yeah. Tom Canavan, AP. Uh, this one's for Dave. Dave, when you go into free agency, how much does what you do in free agency reflect on the draft? I mean, do you evaluate all the college players and say, if I need to fill holes, we need to do this in free agency? Okay, Tom, what we do is um, we have a, a space we call our football ops center. And what we, by the time we get, in, we get deep into free agency conversations, we've had our February draft readings. And so in this ops room, we have our draft on one board and we have our unrestricted free agency board on the other. And what, what we do is we actually do it by color. We take a look at the positions and see where each, where it, you know, if if I need a kicker, is it heavy in, in free agency? Is it, or am I going to have to go to the drafts? So we marry up both, Tom, to answer your question, and and then um, we just, and then we move forward and make decisions on which which way we're going to go because maybe the the you know free agency is thick with a position and the and the draft isn't, or vice versa. So that we do marry it up. Pat Leonard, Daily News. Hey, guys, one for each of you, if you don't mind. Kevin, uh, you know, we all like to think we're experts on what a guy's worth, but, you know, you're an expert actually in the building, you know, negotiating these contracts. 
do you believe that you can overpay for a player? Um, is there such a thing? You know, is it, is it a more complicated um, equation than just saying a player is worth a certain amount in the current market or in the market of his position? How do you evaluate that? I mean, certainly you can overpay a player. Um, I think that in free agency, uh, the danger of free agency is that it's more auction than it is negotiation. But we know what we think the market is for a position. We know where we think players fit within that market. And we'll set those parameters of where we're willing to go to get a player well in advance of the beginning of free agency. Um, ideally, you you come in lower, obviously, than what you think your, your ceiling of comfort is. But... Um, but we do identify what those parameters are before we even begin the process. Great, and, and Dave, a question about a Booker. You guys were pretty aggressive right out of the gate about going after him for some depth at running back. Do you, did you go after him so aggressively because you believe, like say hypothetically, Saquon were not on the field for some reason at the beginning of this season, knock on wood. Do you feel confident that Booker would be able to handle that position and the workload? And is that why you prioritized him as a player? Well, the, one of the reasons we we prioritized, you know, Devonte is we just you know you can never have too many good players at any position. I don't care what anybody says. And the uh, the one of the things one of the things that made Devonte so attractive was the fact that we felt he was a legitimate three down running back. And uh, so we we you know we, it's always a group decision here. It's everything's in the best best interest of the Giants. So we we feel he he could be part of, you know obviously be a good part of our solution at, at running back. Thanks. Our Stapleton, the record. Hey Dave and Kevin, hope you guys are well. Uh, questions for Dave, uh, with you know I guess <clears throat> could apply to Kevin as well. Just in terms of the league, I mean there was so much talk with this, the the cap going down and that there would be a depressed market and that teams would look for value on the market. I'm curious if you guys identified a situation where you could be aggressive, kind of go counter to what maybe the rest of the league was expecting to do. Uh, and maybe that's how some of your deals with, with Galladay and then obviously Adore, which, which came up later, um, just kind of a, a counter thinking when the market is supposed to be as depressed as a lot of people in the league thought it would be. I think that was a small part of our thought process. I mean, we identified, like everyone had, that um, this year was going to be a little different. Uh, cap going down um, impacts everybody. And I think we thought that there would be some opportunities because there might be fewer buyers out there. Um, we think that, um, you know, our plan was to be aggressive from the beginning, though, and we knew that we had ownership support, um, which, I, you know, was probably uncommon this year to be as aggressive as we were. Um, and we had our targets, um, and we, um, as the market played out, it became apparent to us with the targets that we wanted to go and pursue, who was going to be available at the right price for us. You know, and I, and, 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 and and just to supplement that, I, you know, we, we feel like we got very good, you know, three, you know, four really, got to count Leo, spent money on him. We got four high dollar guys at very good value, you know, for their positions, for their, for the whole nine yards. So we're, we're, we, f we felt very good. We feel very good about what we've done. Ryan Dunleavy, New York Post. Hey, Dave, Kevin. I hope you're well. Uh, Kyle Rudolph, obviously, it's, it, it seemed like from the reporting that he agreed to a contract, then he came in for a physical and some stuff came up. Seemed like a kind of point where you guys might have had some leverage to, you know, make his contract more incentive-based or make him earn it or lower the guarantees. What, what's the, like, from an organizational standpoint, why stick with the original handshake agreement? Well, once he went through all the medical evaluations, we didn't feel like it was necessary. And, and, and you know, uh, we are the Giants. We're going to do everything with class. And we, we, came, we had an agreement. Ronnie signed off on it and Doc Rodeo signed off on it, so we were fine. And then if I could ask one other one, Dave, you mentioned the Leonard Williams uh, uh, contract. How, how tough Shame was that me. negotiation? 
<laughs> from a guy from a guy who's done so many of these. How tough was that negotiation relatively? And Kevin, there was a report that you actually stepped in there at the eleventh hour. If you could discuss your role. Go ahead, Kevin. You go first. Uh, I mean, it was a it was a good negotiation. The, the agents were were very good to work with. They were um, they were interactive, which isn't always the case as players become. Uh, as they get closer and closer to free agency, sometimes they become a little harder to reach as they get closer to free agency, but these guys remain involved. Um, Leonard clearly wanted to be here. We clearly wanted him here. Um, it took a while to establish what was a fair spot within the market um, from both perspectives, but eventually we got there. You know, and, and Ryan, just, just to be clear, you know, Kevin's a negotiator here, you know. What, what, what we all do is we all sit down and say, okay, Ryan Dunleavy is a wide receiver, and, you know, we, you know, we like his talents, we like his skill. What's Ryan's value compared to the rest of the, rest of the league, the rest of the wide receivers that are out there? What, what wide receivers got paid in the past year or so? Because you don't want to go back three years because deals are old. So it's, it, it, it's a group effort, and, you know, with Kevin doing the negotiating. Okay, so it's it's um, it, it, it's about value and being comfortable with the end result, which we were very comfortable with all results. Kim Jones, my value zero. Hey, Dave. Um, when you look at the moves you've made so far and the ones that you'll continue to make, obviously with the draft upcoming and and even beyond that. How much of it is designed to make sure Daniel Jones has every opportunity to be the quarterback you've always believed that he would be? Well, you know, Kim, you, you, you're always going to build, you know, you want to build your team to, to make, my job is to put everybody in a position where they're successful, plain and simple. Okay, that's my job, both on the field and off the field. So, of course, you know, you, you know the, I, I've always believed that, you know, you, you draft a quad, you draft, you know, the guy that you feel is going to be your franchise quarterback. The first thing you got to do is get people around and keep them upright, and then you got to get them playmakers. And you help him by doing a variety of things. So obviously, you know, when we make moves on the offensive side and the defensive side, because it's not just, you know, you, you I, I've said to you folks before, you know, offense scores points, defense wins championships. <clears throat> Excuse me. So the point is, every move you make is obviously to, to help each side of the ball. I'll, and, and, and again, teams, you know, you know, special teams are critical as well. So everything is made with the full, you know, broad view of how we're going to make, put this, you know, finish, you know, put the finishing touches on this and, and make it right. So and you, Kevin, you know, if I may. You know, Kim, you know, we, I'm, I'm sorry. No, go ahead. Go ahead. I, go I go thought go you were finished, Dave. I apologize. No, so, you know, obviously we, you know, we felt we needed, you know, we'd like to get a, a, a good, a bigger wide receiver. Kenny was available. We make the deal. That's obviously going to help Daniel. Kyle Rudolph's a professional tight end. You know, he's, he's been in the league 10 years. He knows all the ins and outs. He's still, he's, you know, he's still a solid, you know, he's still a good player. Of course, that helps Daniel, but it also helps our running game too. Helps Saquon, you know. So it's it's a whole picture, if, if that makes sense. It does, and I appreciate that answer. Thank you. And Kevin, for you, at what point will or perhaps already has the idea entered your mind about Saquon's extension, and obviously a little bit beyond that, you hope to be extending Daniel because you hope that he plays great in the meantime. Obviously. Yeah, I mean, those will be collective decisions. Ownership will be involved. Obviously, Dave will lead the charge, and when the time is right, we'll we'll attack those too. But did anything that you did this year was that ever in your mind as you guys spent this year? I mean, always. I mean, you're, everything we do has a, a an immediate and a one, two, three year horizon and, and we're always mindful of how things impact both us today and, and how it impacts us next year and beyond. So we're, we're very cognizant of all those variables. You know, I, I guess the best way I can say, I, Kim, I, guess, I, guess, I think the best way I can say it is, you know, nothing can, really you can't do anything in a vacuum. You really can't. It's all got to be interconnected, interrelated. So, and that's how we operate. Zach Rosenblatt, NJ.com. 
Hey, Dave, um, I know there were reports that you guys had interest in Leonard Floyd. He obviously wound up going back to the Rams, but I'm, I'm just curious, uh, generally speaking, like how, how do you feel about your edge rusher group as you head into this next part of the offseason? I, I know you signed Ryan Anderson. and I'm sorry, Zach. Zach, start again. You said, how do I feel about what? The, ed- the edge rusher group, sorry. Oh, edge rusher, I'm sorry. Yes, sorry about that. Yeah, that's you mean, how you feel about your you group. Mean it? I'm sorry, in the draft? No, how you feel about your group that you have right now as you head in? Well, I think, you know, we've, we you know, you know, we, listen, Lorenzo and, and X-Man are rehabbing, okay? They're coming along well. Feel good about those two guys. You feel good about, <clears throat> excuse me, you know, Cam Brown's going to get better. Kata Coughlin's going to be better. It's, you know, you, you, you're growing them up, and then you're looking at, you know, you're looking at the draft as well, and you can, you're always looking to get better, Zach. You know, you're always looking to – I got – like I said, you can never have too many good players at one position. So you're always going to look to improve. Okay, those guys, you know, like I said, I, I wish that Lorenzo and, and X had been able to play the whole season last year, but you know what? They couldn't. So we filled in with some guys and we, you know, and, and, and did the best we could. And, you know, we're going to do better. Jordan Rana, ESPN. Dave, just, just to build off that for one second, I need to ask about the edge group. Uh, Adenigabo that you signed, you didn't mention him. Is he part of that group? I'm just wondering where you guys kind of view him. You know, he's, believe it or not, he's got some inside pass rush to him. <laughs> he's got some inside sub pass rush to him. And he's, you know, he, he, they're all part of the group, Jordan. They're all part of the group. I was just we, wondering we, if you consider him got an us outside a little linebacker. I'm sorry? I was just curious if you viewed him as an outside linebacker or you viewed him as like a D end in a 3 4 more like four, more. Uh, You know, he'll, He'll, you know, he's, he's, you know, he'll, he'll play outside, you know, and he'll also do some sub inside sub pass rush stuff. My question really was, Dave, I'm, I'm curious. You mentioned the whole bringing Kenny, Kenny and the guys in for a visit with Kenny in particular. What was it you needed answered to have? And then part of the reason why you guys brought him in. Why you guys brought him in? Well, you, you, br- you br- bring him in because you want to get a physical on him, Jordan. That's the big. That was the biggest reason to get a physical on him, but it was it, it was nice for a change to get to know a guy, and you know, and, and and have that opportunity to do that. Like I said, it was the it was the, it was like the old days. So it, the biggest reason was the physical. The yeah. players wanted to come visit too. I mean, it wasn't just our decision. The players wanted to come in as well. Both parties wanted to have the visit. And, and Kevin, I'm curious, you, you mentioned also you, you had to do some things that normally you don't do in regards to contracts and money. And I think we're talking about fu- future, you know, money down the line, void years, that kind of stuff. Uh, how would you categorize now where you stand financially moving forward for the future, for the next year or two, let's say? I think 2022 could be a little bit of a challenge depending on where the cap goes to. And then beyond, I'm more optimistic that um, nothing that we've done last year, this year, um, puts us in any kind of precarious position. But you know, next year could be a little bit of a challenge. We'll see. I mean, it's going to depend on you know science and state legislatures and fans and stands and a lot of other variables that we'll see how it goes. But you know, I, I don't think we're in a, in a bad spot cap-wise. But you know, next year could be a little more challenging than than probably the years after that. Bruce Appreciate Beck. it, guys. Bruce Beck, NBC. Hey, Dave and Kevin. Hope you guys are doing well. Uh, Dave, we always talk about weapons. You always tease us about it. And, and you got a nice one in Kenny Galladay. Do you feel you have a solid arsenal right now for this year? We're talking weapons again, Dave. <laughs> you, you know, it, it, yes. To answer your question, we're better, Bruce. And, and the other – the other guy that's going to be interesting is, you know, John Ross when he walks in the door because he gives you the, you know, take off the top, oh, my gosh, speed. So, yes, you know, it's, it's again, you know, you want, uh, you want touchdown makers is what, you, what you're looking for on offense, and we feel like we added one, maybe two. Kevin, this is similar to Tom Canavan's question. How do you balance free agency with the draft in terms of filling needs but at the same time, selecting the best available talent, it seems to me to be a delicate and challenging combination. 
I mean, as Dave mentioned before, it's, it's, we, we begin the offseason identifying where we feel like we have needs. Um, free agency comes first, so we'll set that board up, find where the value is, where the consensus is between our personnel people and our coaching staff, um, identify the targets we think best fit the Giants, and then we'll incorporate you know, what the early view of our draft board looks like and understand where are our needs and our fits in free agency that also aren't redundant with where the draft is strong. And vice versa, where the draft where the draft is weak, that might be that might be a difference maker when deciding between who to approach in free agency. Thank you. We'll take three more. Lombardo, Rock, Slater, Matt Lombardo, fan sided. Hey guys, hope you're doing well. Um, Dave, I'm curious, just going back to Leonard Williams real quick. What was the calculus between re-signing Leonard and possibly bringing back Delvin Tomlinson? And in hindsight, are there any regrets with how you guys handled Tomlinson over the last year, be it? you know, maybe not re-signing him early or trading when you might have had the chance to? Dalvin is a wonderful young man, and he was a captain. Okay, so obviously there's, there's regret. But at the end of the day, you only have so much money, and you got to make decisions, Matt. Just That's just the way it is. And, uh, you know, we'll, we'll miss Dalvin, absolutely, and I'm thrilled that, you know, he got what he wanted, and, and, and Minnesota's a fine organization. So... You know, for what it's worth, sure, it's hard. But unfortunately, because of the what happened, you got to make decisions. As far as Leonard goes, what kind of separated him and made him a priority for you guys to try to, to bring back and ultimately re-sign at that number? Oh, maybe 11 and a half sacks. <laughs> maybe that was part of it. You know, he's, his, you know he, he's very versatile. He's a legitimate inside pass rusher. And he really blossomed. And he loves being here, and we love having him. So that's why, you know, that was part of the decision. Tom Rock, Newsday. You know, we count, we count the hundreds of millions of dollars that were spent and the number of people who were coming in. How do you guys quantify how much better this team has gotten in your mind, how much closer you are to, to the team you think can contend in the last six weeks? Thank you. How do you mean by quantify, Tom? Well, I mean, do you do you feel like you made large strides? Do you feel like you made small strides? Is it is it more of an immediate uh, uh, impact that you're looking for? I mean, from my opinion, I think Dave would agree. I feel like our roster is a lot better now than it was at the end of the season, um, and the off season's not over yet, so we'll still have more opportunities to add players. Um, so I think we feel good with what we've done. I think we're a uh, a deeper, more talented team. Um, I hope that answers the question. You know, Tom, it, you, you know, you, you can't quantify it. And, and it's not going to be quantified until until uh, the fall and we start playing in September. But we feel good. We feel very good about we, what we've done. We feel very good about the direction the team has taken uh, with getting Kenny signed and Kyle Rudolph and Devontae Booker and Adoree Jackson and, and, uh, and Leo, we feel really great about that. And we, we really feel we're building a, a solid football team that the fans can be proud of. Last question here, Daryl Slater, NJ.com. Hey, hey Dave, uh, regarding the Adoree Jackson deal, um, Mike Sando from The Athletic talked to a few of your uh, colleagues executive-wise around the NFL, and, and a few of them were very critical of the contract. They said it was inexcusable, uh, the high potential of disaster. Um, so, yeah, they, a couple of those guys around the league kind of hammered you on that deal. What is your reaction to that, and, and why do you think um, Adoree is worth that when you look at him skill-wise and injury-wise? Well, my reaction to that is one of the things that make it, makes America – a great place is everybody's entitled to an opinion. Time will tell. What do you think of him as a player, and what, why did you think he was worth that money when you looked at it? Obviously, you guys felt like he was worth the, the money. Why, why is that when you looked at him? Why is that? He's got in, inside outside flex, um, and he's a legitimate cover guy. He can run, <clears throat> excuse me, and he's, uh, he's a very smart football player. He's, he's got ball skills. All that stuff made him worth that. 